Okay. All right, welcome to week two of a virtual session um, on project development. And once again, happy World Environment Day. Um, today we have Dr. Pell with us and she's the co-founder of Turtle Conservation Society of Malaysia. She's a freshwater turtle researcher, conservationist and an entrepreneur. And she has raised approximately 1 million ringgit to fund their turtle conservation efforts. And which is why we have her here today to talk to us about project development on proposal and grant writing. We are really, really um, proud to have, it, have you here. And um, on behalf of our committee and also our participants, we um, are very grateful for your presence today here. So um, I will pass the reef to Dr. Pelf. Okay. Thank you, Mei Mei. Is Mei Mei always so soft? Uh, Am I really soft? <laughs> overly soft. <laughs> right, uh, good morning, girls and boys. <laughs> um, my name is Pels. And uh, well, th thank you. Oh my god, I'm so rude. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Edmund. Thank you, Reef Stakes, uh, for inviting me to this uh, sharing session. Um, I am not used to calling it a lecture. Let's just call it a class. <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm not in the university teaching because of the word lecture. So yeah, let's just do these <laughs> classes today, right? So um, in the first section, I will talk about um, general tips in writing grants, uh, research proposals. It is not going to be a scientific um, by the book uh slides uh because if it was you would have learned it in school in university so i was in school for in in university for many years <laughs> and uh i didn't learn these things so i think uh it would be nice if i shared with you my experiences um so that it gives you a head start lah, so that you don't need to learn from scratch okay Right, um, I'm just going to share my screen. And after sharing this screen, I cannot see you, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think. Um, we can. There's a tree. see myself. Yeah, and then we can. Okay, tapa. Right, shall we start? Okay. Uh, we're going to we are going to talk about uh, fundraising for research and conservation projects. I understand that some of you are in finance, economics, uh, law, science, IT, software engineering, not exactly uh, conservation fields, but that's okay because I think in uh, everybody's uh, line of job, uh, there will come a time when you will be needed to write a proposal. Uh, maybe not for research, but maybe for uh, a tender, to, to tender a project, uh, maybe bidding documents, and uh, hopefully these this, uh, tips will come in handy then, lah, right? So, but before I go on and on and on about raising funds, I <laughs> um, just wanted to very briefly introduce uh, uh, myself and uh, this NGO that I keep talking about. Uh, we are called Turtle Conservation Society of Malaysia, uh, in short TCS. Uh, it was established in 2011, so we are 10 years old this year by myself and my former supervisor, a retired professor from the university. And our goal of um, objective of uh, establishing this non-profit organization in Malaysia uh, is to protect and conserve endangered turtles. This is very simply put. Okay, and how do we do this? It is by uh, conducting research uh, and conservation projects, by conducting uh, educational programs, we call it turtle camps with kids, as well as uh, public awareness campaigns. Okay, so in, in our non-profit organization, even though it is an NGO, uh, we, we accept interns, you know, and people who write in to us or apply to be our interns, they are mostly students or uh, uh, graduates almost finishing school. Uh, 
in marine biology, in marine science, environmental science. But um, in running an NGO, it's the same as running a business or uh, any other form of organization. There are operation costs involved. For example, you have general expenses, everything that doesn't go anywhere, just put it into general expenses. Uh, we, we have a category for uh, donation and gifts. You know, uh, well, bank charges, for example, when you apply for a, a checkbook, the bank automatically deducts 15 ringgit from your bank account, your savings, your current account. And then we have web subscriptions. For example, if you have a website, then you need to renew your domain, your URL, website URL every year, as well as your web hosting space. Uh, if you also use subscriptions like uh, Planoli or Later to schedule your Instagram or Facebook posts, uh, pro features in accounts like Canva, uh, those are web subscriptions. Yeah. And regardless of what you do, there may be a time where you need to subscribe to these uh, services. And then um, you may hire a bookkeeper uh, to, to uh, manage your uh, your expenses, your, your claim forms, right? And then, uh, so we we, uh, we do therapy and conservation uh, project uh, in the Kampong. I will go to this in the second half of uh, the class today. Uh, so we have utility bills to pay, uh, electricity bill, water bill. We need to buy food to feed the therapeans because they don't just survive on water and air, right? And uh, maintenance, you know, to maintain the hatchery. Um, I'm, I'm in our office right now, um, so we have an office, so even though we are working from home, we still need to pay rent, uh, we still need to pay Unify, uh, so these are bills that you cannot run away from, lah. Uh, well, unless you start a small home office, you're working from home, so then you're able to keep your expenses a little lower. Um, printing and stationery pun cannot run away. Uh, if we send a letter to a potential donor or a corporate company seeking a donation, either a financial donation or in kinds, um, you need to paste a one ringgit and 30 cents stamp on the envelope. So it's not cheap. Yeah, so I've spent the past two years writing thank you postcards, happy birthday postcards to our donors, people who support us in the past many years. And the good thing about sending postcards is that it's 50 cents stamp. Okay, so that's one way to lower your expenses. Uh, travel expenses, not so much during COVID, but uh, pre-COVID, we used to travel quite a bit because uh, we have always been invited to give talks, uh, in-person talks or conduct little camps in school so we need to drive there ourselves. We have a van uh, that was donated to us by Bajaya Cast Foundation uh, and even if the van is not moving running now we need to pay uh, road tax, insurance, petrol, sometimes you still need to drive it around otherwise the battery dies and then you pay more for the battery, <laughs> the car battery, the van battery. Yeah, and um, for a small business like ours, uh, I know I mentioned that we are uh, an NGO. Uh, we'll go into why we also call ourselves a business. Uh, we also need to purchase uh, either products to sell for resale or uh, raw materials to turn them into merchandise that we can sell to raise funds. Okay, so this generally uh, what an organization might need to spend on. Okay, so all this just money going out, 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 out. So how do you raise funds to sustain your, your business or your organization? So there are a couple of um, income streams. Uh, you may have read about, oh, you may have read about it. Okay, some students here from finance and economics, correct me if I'm wrong, please, because I'm not from this field. Um, we accept donations. Uh, we call it uh, charitable contributions uh, from your family and friends, uh, including uh, friends of your dads or your moms. And uh, in our case, uh, in TCS's case, 
we also have our own symbolic therapine adoption where you symbolically adopt a therapine. You don't get to take it home, yeah? I will raise it for you. Uh, you make a donation and then we'll raise the therapines for you. Uh, Pre-COVID, uh, you would have uh, been, been able to organize Lawatan Sambi Belaja. So you can charter a bus and come over to Kemaman and we'll do some, you know, clean the ponds and pull with some gotong royong. But we won't be able to do that now. So uh, during the MCOs, the multiple MCOs, we have started giving um, virtual tours. So that, that's just me talking to the phone and uh, people pay to listen to me talk to the phone. <laughs> but I'll show you the turtles that we have in our hatchery. I'll show you our hatchery. I'll show you our gallery. And uh, that's one of the ways we raise funds. Lah. Uh, corporate philanthropy will refer to uh, corporate companies, uh, big companies, you know, like, like banks or uh, automobile companies. Uh, big companies with at least 200 staff. Okay, so when they make a donation, then it wouldn't be like 500 ringgit. It would be more substantial. Uh, or you can raise funds from research uh, or sometimes they call it conservation grants, depending on what the grant making company uh, wants to give out funding for. Uh, or we can raise funds from the local government. So we have received uh, funding from the local Adun, uh, not, not the MP Adun. Um, not much, but uh, good enough that they support our conservation project. Okay? And also from the sale of uh, products, or if you don't sell products, maybe from the sale of your services. Uh, what is it that you, okay, so I read John Grisham novels, so uh, they charge by the hour, right? So you build your clients by the hour, right? So yeah, uh, that's how you raise funds, right? So uh, from grants, uh, research and conservation grants, uh, in the past 10 years, I have raised a little more than a million ringgit for uh, our freshwater turtle research, uh, conservation projects, uh, rehabilitation. So we rehabilitate sick turtles before we release them back into the river. Uh, educational programs, because people don't give you money to play with kids. So we have raised these funds ourselves, uh, as well as uh, for public awareness uh, campaigns. Right, some tips that I would like to share with you. I think I have 10, 10 5 or 10 <laughs> tips on uh, writing a proposal or what you would call a grant making, uh, a grant uh, application, okay? So the first one is to always have a project in mind. So uh, like if you're like me, I need to write it down. <laughs> Old school pen and paper person. But your know, generation, yeah, you, you probably do everything on cloud, right? Um, have a project in mind. Decide what is it that you want to do. Uh, brainstorm with friends. Uh, what I always do is that I run it uh, by my family. I, I tell my mom. Okay, uh, I would tell her, this is what I'm planning to do, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to need to purchase. And then she will play it in her mind and then she will ask me questions. So the rationale behind sharing with my mom is that if my mom doesn't understand what I'm going to do, uh, other people most probably wouldn't understand. Right? So these people who give out grants, they are not in the same field as yourself. Right? So there must be a way for you to put it in writing so that uh, that person on the other end reading your grant application form or your project proposal, uh, they can understand you, what you want to do. Don't go round and round and round, you're trying to make yourself sound smarter. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> okay, so uh, if, if you don't want to run it by your mom, that's fine. Run it by your peers. Uh, if you have friends in your, your, your lab or your own office, you know, your co-worker sitting right next to you in the office, run the idea by them and see what they think about it. Or maybe some other people have done it before, how you can continue uh, that kind of research uh, project. Um, so a lot of grant-making companies these days, they provide a template 
so that all these applicants, uh, people like ourselves who want to apply for funding, so that we answer all the same questions and that it's easier for them to give us points, ratings, stars. Okay, so follow instructions. Um, I would say answer the application form uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, whatever you know, put it in simple writing, no need bombastic language full of jargons. Uh, write it in such a way that people can understand what you want to do. And it's easier for them to give you money that way too, right? Don't copy and paste from another application, just like when you're looking for a job. So if you're looking for a job with TCS, uh, the moment I see uh, dear sir slash madam, I would like to apply for this position in your company, the moment I see that, I, I make a first impression that you don't even read up that we are not a company, we are a non-profit organization. It is a very big difference because if you think we are a company, then uh, your asking salary might be a little higher. Uh, you may expect uh, some structure <laughs> in the organization, which you know, I'm in the process of developing the structures, but you know, we're getting there. <laughs> so let's, I mean, if you compare the body shop and TCS, totally different, lah, kan? right? So, uh, do a bit of research, uh, don't copy and paste from another application, write it from scratch. And uh, always, always be honest and uh, realistic when preparing a budget. A lot of projects do not get funded because it is way blown up. So for a project that will only take you 50,000 ringgit, don't put it in the budget that you will need 100,000 to do it. Because people who give out funding, they want to stretch their dollars as well. So if I can support, if 100,000 ringgit I'm giving out, if I can support five projects, I would do that, right? Why would I give you just you know, one organization or one company or one project? If I can give five and create more impact, a larger impact, right? So be, be realistic, be honest about it. Um, also be clear about your methods. This is super, super important because if you are not clear about what you want to do, other people wouldn't get you. So no, no, no matter how much you try to uh, take people around the gardens, okay, uh, they, they won't be able to get you. So write intentionally. Every word that you put down must serve a purpose. Don't go round and round and round. You see, I'm repeating myself because this is some mistakes that I have made multiple times in the past 20 years I've been writing grants. <laughs> and uh, respect the word limit. If they say 300 words means 300 words. Lah. Cut it down to write, write it out in a word document and then uh, read it again and again. Cut down unnecessary words. Go straight to the point. The word limit is there uh, so that you write succinctly and not uh, tell a grandmother story just to get to your point. So this is very important. Uh, don't bluff. You see the whole team, don't bluff, don't blow it up, be honest. Yeah. So you be sincere about it and people can feel it when they are reading your application. So ensure your project is realistic. If the project takes uh, one year to complete, uh, don't tell your funder that you can get it done in six months. <laughs> or if the project uh, takes, uh, you, you, you need uh, two years to do it, don't tell them you need to stretch it up to five years to complete it. Okay, so ensure that it is realistic. You can do this by talking to your co-workers, to your peers, to your friends, and then they will ask you, wow, that project needs so long, man. So, so that, that's just the questions that people ask you back, once you share with them, gives you feedback that will help in your uh, grant application. Don't always, always uh, under-promise and over-deliver, not the other way around. Don't promise that you will uh, find three new spider species and describe five existing ones and publish 20 journal articles in a year. <laughs> Most people don't do that in their lifetime, like me. <laughs> so don't, don't over promise and then later on realize that, you know what, nah, this is not going to happen. Especially during uh, the multiple MCOs during the pandemic, uh, give yourself more time because the, 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 the equipments that you're going to order will take longer to arrive. 
communication with your peers, you know, in the uh, proposal uh, development stage or report writing stage, all this is going to take longer because you're working from home, right? So budget accordingly. And don't leave uh, grant applications until the last minute because uh, then you cannot think properly. Uh, start the document, start typing uh, early as soon as you de decide to apply. And then uh, over the next, I don't know, two or three months, keep revisiting it so that your ideas form better. Add new points after you have talked to your peers. So that's how you build a proposal. So uh, a good one, one that gets funding, uh, doesn't happen overnight. You know, it doesn't come to you. But the idea may come to you when you're in the shower or when you're driving. But a, a good one uh, that will get you money it doesn't happen in the last five minutes before deadline, uh, before the submission deadline. Okay, so allow yourself more time so that you are able to articulate what you want to do. Okay, so far? All right. So I think that a project proposal as well as a grant application serves two functions. Maybe more, but uh, I can think of two. One is for myself as the principal investigator or the project executant. I'm going to do the project. So better I have uh, everything written down right now because we all know when you apply for a grant, the money is not going to come tomorrow, right? So it's going to come, I don't know, if you're getting the grant, it may, the, the funds may finally come in after three months, six months later. So you want to be able to have a clear idea of what is it you're going to do, uh, all written down, right? Okay, in your case, maybe in your phone somewhere. Uh, in my case, it's in a notebook that I always carry with me. So that's for me to refer back and uh, in case anything goes wrong or I, for a short while, I forget my, my aim, my objective, you know, what am I going to do next? You know, I'm so overwhelmed with work. I go back to my uh, notebook and I revisit my proposal. So that's like a guideline. Okay? For the person giving money to us, the, the funder, the people that your donor, uh, they want to know how you're going to use their money, right? So if they're giving you 100,000, so they want to know how many people you are benefiting, who are your beneficiaries, how is it going to change lives or improve the environment or uh, the wildlife that you're helping to save? Or uh, uh, what, what are you going to do with the money? So that is when a proposal comes in. So when you apply, when you fill up a grant application form, always, always remember to include uh, a good catching eye-catching title. You can leave it until the end. That's what I always do type the whole thing out and then come back and think about a nice title. Something that is short, catchy, uh, made up of keywords so that people, you know, when they're just reading your, your title, they know what you want to do. Okay. Uh, research overview. This is also important uh, for environmental research, uh, marine biology. Uh, what else? Uh? Uh, I'm not sure what you do in chemical engineering. <laughs> um, what in this section, what you should include is uh, the issues, the problems that you want to solve. What is the problem? What is it that you have identified? And then justify why the funder should give you money. So you can say that, uh, like me, I can say that I've been doing this for 200 years. Uh, I mean 20. <laughs> and then... Uh, I can say that I have done this and that, we have achieved this and that, just like how at the beginning of this class just now, I told you that we have raised a little more than a million ringgit uh, for total research from grants. So that's my justification. So that's how I want you to listen to me, right? Sell yourself. Research context is also important because you want to tell the person reading your application why is your research important? Uh, how does it fit into the objective of the funder? So if the funder is giving out funding uh, to help B40 women, for example, you go on and on and on about how your project can uh, feed hungry kids. Of course, you're not getting the money lah, because 
<laughs> it's not in line with their objectives, right? And uh, how will it add value to the work that they are already doing? So people like these uh, uh, value-added uh, services, just like how when you go to McDonald's, they ask you, do you want to upsize your code, right? Same things. You want to add value to your code, then they take 160 more from you. So then they give you a larger cup of code, right? So demonstrate that you know what you are talking about. Again, don't bluff, uh, don't blow it up. Just, uh, just no need to write about what you don't know about, but write about what you know about, okay? And um, this is also very important. Everything here is important, right? <laughs> research questions. What are the questions that will guide your research? So if you already have a proposal written, or if you're in the process of drafting a proposal, this is where you ask yourself these questions. What are the questions that will, I want to try to answer through my research? All right. Okay, again, methods is very important. How are you going to uh, achieve your objective? You say you're going to feed uh, 2,000 kids in a month. Okay, so how are you going to do that? Okay, who are your suppliers? Uh, where are you going to get people to cook for them? Where are you going to get, uh, where are you going to source your uh, paper boxes from them? Who is going to deliver this uh, food to these uh, hungry kids? Okay, so you need to have all this written down. Uh, use specific examples if you are going to use some uh, uh, techniques like uh, I know scanning electron microscope technique or histology or pathology, write this down. Uh, include sample size. Uh, if you are going to do a questionnaire based survey, uh, include tell your funder you're going to talk to 2000 people and get their feedback or responses, not 20. So when they see 200, 2000, then they know, okay, you know what? This is going to take more than two months. They're going to take a long time because they intend to speak to uh, 2000 respondents. Okay. Uh, who are your target population? Like for ourselves, if I want to ask, uh, do a questionnaire-based survey about uh, whether you have seen river terrapins, you know, or whether you have eaten sea turtle eggs, I don't go to a private school in KL, right? Kids in the private school in KL, number one, they don't have access to turtle eggs in the city. And number two, they probably watch a lot of National Geographic or you know, uh, documentaries about conservation. So no. So you want to go to Kampung Kampung. You want to talk to Pachi Pachi. You know? These are people who regularly buy uh, turtle eggs. Okay, so this is targeting. So how do you uh, spend your time efficiently, but then get back uh, your return on your investment. You get a lot of responses in a short time. This is how you use your time uh, efficiently, right? So equipment, if you're going to buy equipment, are they available in Malaysia? If they're not available, buy from where? US. How long is shipping going to uh, take? It's COVID now, so the plane probably flies, I don't know, once a week. Something like that, you know, you need to budget uh, time for your chemicals or your uh, equipments to arrive. Uh, data analysis, what program are you going to use? Uh, Excel is powerful, but if you want to use uh, an R program or uh, SPSS, uh, this, is, this is fine too. But tell your funder that this is what you intend to do. So then they understand that, okay, you know what, this applicant, he knows what he's talking about. Okay, uh, discuss timeline. Uh, nobody likes last minute surprises, you know. So I give you 20,000 ringgit for a project and nine months into the project, you send me an email to say that uh, I need extra time, <laughs> right? So, well, in under circumstances like the pandemic, uh, I have done that myself too. I have written to a funder to extend uh, uh, our grant so that uh, we have more time to do uh, what we have promised to do. Uh, but also when you're putting it down in your proposal, uh, discuss this as well. Give yourself time to breathe. You know, if you say 2,000 respondents divided into three months, then how, in, in one month, how many uh, uh, surveys, questionnaire-based questionnaire surveys you need to do? Divide that by four weeks, how many you need to do in a week? So give yourself time to breathe and rest. And uh, don't be overly optimistic because uh, Murphy's Law, 
anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Uh, when you need to print your report, then the printer will run out of ink. <laughs> Things like that will happen when you write your thesis, right? It happened to me when I was writing my thesis. So uh, just budget a little more time for everything. Okay, uh, demonstrate why your project is important. Uh, why is it, uh, why, why should I give you money? Okay, think about this. Why should the funder give you money? And uh, references, I would prefer three high quality references than 30 references that is no quality. So no point, you know, filling up the literature cited section of the application form just to show your funder that you have read this many papers, you know, but uh, do they add value to your grant application? So that's questions we need to ask ourselves. Are we good so far? Am I still just talking to myself? <laughs> Yes, excellent. Yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, all good. All good. Continue, yeah. Learning, absorbing, <laughs> like a sponge. Yeah, very, very easy to learn. Thank you, thank you. So, so we, from there, we move on to the common mistakes. Uh, well, actually, I should just say that these are mistakes that I have made myself. So, please don't make these mistakes, okay? Learn from my mistakes. Uh, this, I always think it this way. Life is so short. We don't have time to make all the mistakes ourselves, right? So learn from other people's mistakes, uh, quickly move on, okay? Uh, you don't make your own mistakes, but here, 10, okay? There may be more, you know, but uh, let's just start with 10. Lah, huh? um, the first is that you fail to demonstrate the importance of your project or your research ideas. You go on and on and on. Orang cakap ini tak jawab soalan. <laughs> dia, dia tanya soalan mengapa you thought you jawab soalan tu you know bukan sebab apa-apa you know you you don't answer questions so you don't show you don't demonstrate to your funder uh, why this project is important so they cannot see it so people ask me and I appreciate it when they ask me why do you save the toast that means I need to edit my elevator pitch because in my elevator pitch I'm not telling people why it is important to save the toast so I'm just saying that they are critically endangered. Uh -huh. So what, right? So what people want to know is ecologically, what are the roles of the terrapins or the sea turtles? So when you start telling people that green turtles feed on algae so that, you know, new algae, new, sorry, sorry, green turtles feed on seagrasses or seaweed so that uh, new seagrasses or seaweed that grow will be uh, healthy and uh, it also provides food for dugong. So then people are like, Aha, and now I get you, right? So if we don't have uh, green turtles anymore in the ocean, what, what's going to happen? Right? So then they can put two and two together. So the first mistake is define your objectives and uh, put it in short, simple sentences and demonstrate why your project is important. Okay? Second mistake is the project is overly ambitious because I am an over ambitious person. I always want to get things done, like a lot of things done in the shortest time possible. Sometimes you get burned out. Like I just, it just happened to me, you know, not too long ago. I got burned out. I had a meltdown. I cried in front of my daughter. So don't do that to yourself. Okay. Don't uh, put together a project that is so big that when you get the money, the first thing you say is, I got the money, what am I going to do now? <laughs> right? So, uh, plan accordingly, lah, right? Uh, number three, you fail to balance uh, your research expertise uh, and your project, uh, your, the complexity of your project. So, what this means is that you put together a very nice project proposal. Uh, you want to do this, 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 but you don't have experienced people in your team to actually do this, this, and this. Or you have a lot of experience. You spend, you like me, spend 30 years in school, you get your multiple degrees. Tapi you, you propose a research projects that a high schooler can do. <laughs> so then you don't get the, the, the funding. Lah, because then the, the funding agency will say, ah, you're such a simple project. You know, I, I can give it to some high school kids to do it. Right? So there must be a balance to the degree of difficulty that you can uh, uh, take on 
it must match your level, uh, your, your, your uh, uh, education background, your experience, or tumpang glamour lah, kan? You work with your supervisor because your supervisor has a ton of experience, right? So you pinjam nama dia lah. <laughs> okay. Number four is that your team, uh, most times when we submit a proposal or a grant application, we work in a team, okay? So if your team is missing the critical expertise, for example, um, I don't have backgrounds in genetics, okay? So imagine if I put together a proposal and talk about, uh, I want to do uh, conservation genetics, I want to do paternity testing, I want to find out uh, how many males sired uh, one, the, the eggs from one female. That means all the eggs from one terrapin, the babies will hatch. All these babies come from how many males? Paternity testing. But I don't have the critical skills. In this case, genetic skills. I don't talk DNA. I don't talk microsatellites. So I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So then I won't be able to put together a proposal to get money for that project. Law. So then I will need to work with a geneticist, right? Okay, number five, you don't talk about a possible problem or the limitation. It's like if you don't talk about it, then you don't think about it. So your funder will be like, hmm, this is all just rainbows and you know candies, you know, but life being life <laughs> will throw you obstacles. Right, so do you have a contingency plan? Do you have, uh, have you assessed the risk associated with your project? So the risk can be really simple ones that uh, your chemicals uh, expired. So that, that, that is a risk, it will happen. So what happens if that happens? You buy more chemicals, right? So what happens if your SEM machine breaks down? <laughs> So you, you anticipate it breaking down. So then you put it in your uh, application, say that if it breaks down, then you will pinjam the machine from another university or uh, order a new machine <laughs> if it's a cheap one, right? So have this contingency plan so that your funder can see that uh, you have thought about it. Of course, nobody thought about COVID, lah, kan? <laughs> So if you have to, okay, for in example, my case, uh, I work with river terrapins in the kampung and the kampung is so prone to flooding. So I can include that, you know, that the risk is flooding. So what am I going to do about it? So I'm either going to uh, do more of the work before the flooding or uh, I can do remote control or I can, uh, what other ways to mitigate this risk? so that you are able to complete your project within the time frame. Plan B. Okay, uh, I, I talked about uh, respecting word limits, okay? Don't go on and on and on and not, not taking your funder back to the project that you are proposing. <laughs> uh, you talk more about the problem, it's like they are giving you funding to solve an issue. But then you're putting so many more new, new problems into your pro proposal that <laughs> you overwhelm them. <laughs> so you, sorry, you overwhelm them. And then, oops, how now? So we got more problems than when we started. <laughs> no good. Okay, uh, offer solution. I, I do this with my interns. I tell them that um, you can and you should come to me with problems that you cannot settle. But I also want to hear at least one solution that you have tried. Don't just say, uh, oh, Dr. Pelva, this one I cannot. Uh. So how? So you throw the problem to me. So maybe you can also tell me that we have tried this, but it doesn't work. So then I will think of other things. Lah, right? So show me that you are resourceful enough to uh, look for solutions. Okay? And losing your voice um, many times the people who are sending in a grant applications the people who are uh, proposing to do a project you la, okay the project investigator the pi okay the principal investigator or the project executant you are building a name for yourself you know when you apply for uh, funding grants you know from every agency that you can find 
you know? So you're building a name for yourself. And uh, I haven't given out grants, but I have a feeling that we keep on receiving grants because we have established a reputation for ourselves. Okay. And uh, you want to maintain your voice. So don't lose it. Okay. Don't lose your voice. Don't lose your sincerity. Don't lose your passion. Don't lose your fire. Don't use buzzwords from uh, other websites. That one is not your voice. Okay. You can get ideas from them, but use your own voice. Uh, no need to copy and paste because you think your funder wants to see this done, right? So you go to the funding website, <laughs> copy one whole chunk or two sentences and then paste it in and say that our project will do this. Okay? Uh, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Use your own sentences. Okay? And um, <laughs> this one pun satu lagi tak jawab soalan. Dia tanya apples, you give them oranges. Very important. Uh, you, you, don't, you don't think of it as a problem, but it is. So when we are giving out funding to do uh, certain projects, but you, you submit a proposal to me to do another project. So you're not going to get the money, lah, long story short. Okay, next. <laughs> and cut the budget or uh, create a budget that doesn't make sense. So there is really no excuse all with these days uh, with you know, information in your finger, finger, in your palm, in your phone. If you do not know how much the machine is going to cost, uh, call uh, uh, a salesman up. If you do not know how much some uh, 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 your raw materials is going to cost, and if it is sold in Shopee or Lazada, go and do a bit of quick research. You know how much is going to cost, and there is no excuse for you to say I do not know how much. So let's just. You know, I want to buy a temperature scanner. I don't know how much is it, but you know, let's just put it down as 1,000 ringgit. It doesn't make sense. You, know, you can get those things for 20 ringgit in Shopee. Okay? So be realistic. And uh, the last mistake, <laughs> uh, you, you fail. I used to fail. Okay? I failed in ex to, to explain it, to share with the funder what will change if I got the grant. Okay, the whole, why do people give you money? They want you as the middle person to do good work. Okay, for example, uh, you know, somebody wants to build, a uh, the government wants to build uh, a bridge. Okay, this one, true story. Yeah. I was recently uh, approached by an architect company. Uh, they, they invited me to be a subject matter expert because they wanted to bid for a project to rebuild the Cherating Turtle Sanctuary. Okay, uh, long story short, we didn't get the project, but uh, the learning part is very important. So even architect company, they need to put together a tender document. So the tender document is your proposal. So that's where, I don't know, you give them a rough sketch of what you plan to do, right? You want to uh, harvest rainwater, you want to use solar panels, and then the solar panels will run your uh, aircon or whatever. Okay? And then you want to have a huge hatchery to cut the so that your rangers uh, you know, can come in and put the eggs into the hatchery, fence it up so that monitor lizards cannot uh, get the eggs. So the architect company put together a tender document and uh, this just shows that not only environmental science students need to write proposals, right? architects need to do that too. So there will be a time when you will need to write a proposal or a, an application for money, for funding. Okay? So when somebody gives you money, you, they want to know how much good that money is going to, to, uh, to do. I'm not going to give you a, a lot of money if you're going to cut down all the trees. Right? But if you tell me with this, uh, I don't know, 100,000 ringgit, you are going to uh, help save more tigers or, or hire more uh, rangers to patrol the forest, then yes, I know where the money is going to. It's going to go to the livelihoods of people. Right? So don't forget this. Don't forget or don't, don't skip this to, to explain to your funder how much good the money is going to do. People like to know that their money is doing good. Okay? 10 tips enough, law. We can move on again. 
I cannot see you. <laughs> yes, yes, you can move on. <laughs> okay. um, Let's go. So what happens after you win a grant? I, I don't say you got a grant, yeah, because uh, let's be honest about it. It is a competition. So yes. So when you win a grant, you own it, right? You deserve it. So after you win the grant, of course, then you tell people about it on Twitter, can So yes, congratulations. You've uh, uh, been awarded a grant to do this uh, project that you have proposed to do. Remember the grant proposal that we prepared? <laughs> uh, you may need to read that again <laughs> because after so many months, so many things have happened and suddenly, you know, this thing became, this thing called COVID became our uh, everyday uh, 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 in our conversation. So review your grant proposal. Uh, what was it that you proposed to do? What was it that you planned to do? Is it still applicable now? Can it still be done now? Uh, I applied for 100,000, but you're giving me 50,000. So something needs to be cut out somewhere, right? Uh, if you apply for 100 and they give you 50, you will not be able to give them a hundred thousand uh, in research uh, results. Okay, so be realistic. Which ones need to cut? Uh, need to be cut, uh, and where else you need to source for matching grants? Okay, okay. Uh, you thank the funder. Uh, remember the postcard. Only fifty cents to send a postcard, a thank you postcard to your funder anywhere they are. Okay, even in the U.S., in the in India or China or Russia, uh, U.K. Only fifty cents then. Okay, I, I know you reply to the email and thank them, but I think people appreciate that personal touch to tell them that you appreciate uh, uh, the good news that they send you, right? So yeah, a little personal touch goes a long way. So thank the funder. And then you need to reconvene <laughs> with your collaborators or your partners, uh, your project partners where applicable. If it is uh, your own project, then no, no need. Lah. But if you are going to work with a lot of people, like if I'm going to work with a geneticist to do a, a paternity test, then I will need to contact my coworker, my partner, and I will need to finalize some details. So if we are getting less money than we applied for, then I will say, you know what? <laughs> we're not going to do 100 samples. Can we do 70? Because we're not getting a lot more money from this. Can, uh, can you write to the lab and request for a 20% discount? <laughs> because we are an NGO. <laughs> so think of ways to stretch the ringgit, the dollars that you have uh, received. Okay. Uh, and then you plan for the implementation, whatever project is that, okay? You gather your resources. If you say you're gonna buy the equipment, please buy the equipment. If you need a research assistant, please hire the person. If you need to book a lab, please do so. Uh, ensure that everybody in your team uh, is clear of their own responsibilities, okay? And while you're executing the project, always bear in mind that one day, not too far away, you are going to write the, the report, right? So if you purchase something, uh, keep the receipts. If the receipt is going to be faded, uh, scan it, take a picture of it, okay? So that later when you print it, you can still see what you paid for. And uh, project activities, what worked, what, what didn't work, put it down in, in, in paper, in writing, uh, that you will need to use when you are writing your report. Uh, review your spending from time to time. I highly recommend doing this. If your project is for a year, review it every month. You don't want to overspend because uh, that is like a red flag, you know? Uh, to the funder. Next time you apply for a funding, maybe you will not get it because now you build a reputation for yourself for overspending. But you don't like leave half the amount unspent. That just shows that you are not capable of following your own proposal. <laughs> so do die, don't, don't do die. <laughs> okay, so follow, uh, review your, your spending. Uh, spend what you plan to spend. Okay, yeah. Okay, so when you're done with your project, uh, at the end of the project duration, uh, usually you're given one month to write up a, a report, okay? So 
what you should do is first gather this information from your collaborators, from your project partners, and then you delegate this to them. So if they did the histology, they did the pathology, you make them write the report. Because if I write it, my voice is not going to be there. I don't have the, the vocabulary, you know, the words needed to write the report, the section of the report. And if the funder provides a template, better still, just fill up the form, answer all sections. Uh, even if uh, you are unable to do it, any one component of your project, even if you have overspent one component of the project because suddenly the exchange rate uh, you know, uh, change overnight, or uh, if uh, because of COVID, <laughs> blame COVID, uh, you were unable to do certain things because our movements are restricted, you know, we cannot travel uh, to another state, for example, right? Uh, don't, don't just uh, report all the good news. If they are bad news, don't just keep it to yourself, share with them as well. They want to know uh, what were the problems that you face and what were the actions that you tried to take. Like, don't like, try to cross borders without a police permit. Don't do that because your funder's not going to bail you, okay? Always find ways to explain how the project has made an impact. So don't just say that uh, by doing this project, we have uh, purchased uh, 300 terrapin eggs. So add something on, for example, without this funding, without this project, all 300 eggs would be eaten by the local villagers. So then the funder feel like, wow, I saved 300 eggs from being eaten by people, right? Or if you put money in to, uh, for patrolling, uh, to hire 20 more uh, patrollers to patrol the uh, a forest, you know, so that they stay away from our tigers. So you tell your funder that from this funding that you have received, you are able to hire 20 more young people, youth, from these uh, orang asli villages. So then they get, they get money and then you are able to cover 3,000 kilometers uh, more. Something like that. <laughs> I'm just pulling figures from my head. So the funders want to do, ha. Ah. So previously, we were only just patrolling an area the size of Singapore. But with an additional 20 uh, 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 rangers, we are able to patrol another additional half the size of Singapore, for example. Okay? So then they know where their money goes to. Uh, ensure your finances are in order. That's why I say review your spending every month. Uh, if you find that you have overspent somewhere, uh, try not to overspend somewhere else. <laughs> okay. And then finally, package the report. Uh, your funders cannot be with you when you are doing the project. For example, when you are doing this lab work in your lab. They cannot see the culture, they cannot see when the machine is giving you uh, issues or uh, results. Uh, they cannot see this bacteria multiplying, you know. So show them before and after projects. Show them pictures of smiling kids. Show them pictures of turtles, right? So package it nicely in graphs, like in this picture, you know, it's very appealing because you have many colors. Uh, include maps, tell them, put a pin into your map where this project uh, was conducted. If there are many pins, better still, because then uh, the outreach is bigger. And uh, media articles, if you have been uh, interviewed by a radio station or a newspaper article, uh, mention this yayasan or whatever uh, funding agency, they like to see their name appear in newspapers. They have somebody who calculates the, the ROI, you know, each time they appear in the papers. So package your report nicely, okay? Besides grant applications and project proposals, there are other ways to raise funds. And uh, the more you're in the field, uh, the more that you find people come up with new ideas to raise funds. Okay, so these are not mine. Yeah, <laughs> of course, I got them from friends, from people like Edmund. Uh, you'll see later uh, the things that people do, other NGOs, other companies. Kalau yang baik tu kita ambil, yang kurang baik tu kita janganlah ambil, right? So some creative ways, I think I have 10 to share with you. Uh, the first is crowdfunding. This is very popular. Uh, a lot of people are doing this now. Uh, crowdfunding meaning uh, you get 
uh, money you raise funds from donors, uh, friends, friends of friends, up to many degrees of separation because you don't really need to know that person, the donor. Okay? What you need is uh, a page, okay, which is uh, very easy to set up if you use uh, platforms like Simply Giving, Sedunia. I'm pretty sure there are many more. <laughs> uh, very easy to set up. It is hassle-free. Uh, you are able to uh, post updates. So let's say if you say um, you want to raise funds to plant 1,000 trees, but you need money to buy the... the saplings <laughs> from the nursery, right? So then you need capital. Yeah, so you need to raise this capital from uh, your friends or their friends or their colleagues, people you do not know, right? So you just set up a page on Simply Giving or Sardunia and after uh, getting money to buy uh, uh, half of it, so they can post an update and say, oh, okay, we have uh, raised so much money to buy uh, half and we are able to plant half of what we promised to plant. So when you give people updates, when you give donors updates, uh, they will feel good knowing that you are using their money where uh, it's supposed to be used for. Okay, Not just take their money and then you ghost them. Huh, I learned this from my intern. You ghost them, meaning then suddenly you will heal. <laughs> okay? yeah. So don't, don't ghost people. <laughs> don't go missing. Yeah. Baik tak baik pun, uh, at least uh, keep people informed. Kalau tak jadi tanah pokok pun, bagi tahulah kenapa tak jadi, tanah dia tak sesuai ke, uh, uh, anak pokok tu belum besar ke, or COVID ke. <laughs> okay, so crowdfunding platform will charge a service fee. Uh, that depends on which platform you use. And uh, I think this is a fair uh, amount to pay. Okay, not like 20-30% lah, maybe like 3-5%. Uh, that is a fair amount to pay. And you, you get a link to your, your page which you can just share very easily. People get access to it. And they have a secure uh, a payment gateway so that people can pay using credit card without fearing that their card number will be stolen, that kind of things. Okay. And then, uh, or uh, you can also, well, this, this don't have to be exclusive. You can do and or <laughs> contact uh, potential donors if your, your friend has, uh, your, your father has a rich friend. <laughs> Or better still, you have a rich friend. <laughs> uh, contact these friends, uh, companies, individuals, or anybody that can help you raise funds. Or uh, anybody who from young, from high school, memang dia selalu jual barang-barang je. You know, even staying in the hostel pun dia boleh jual VCD or rent out uh, VCD. True story, uh, what happened to my, my friends. Masa dulu duduk hostel, uh, when we were in the university pun, these students make money tau in their hostel dorm. So, but they rent out CDs. <laughs> so, that's just an uh, uh, innovative way, I would say, okay, to, to raise funds. So, uh, kalau ada kawan macam tu, then you may want to run your ideas to them or uh, ask them for help. So, when you approach a friend for a business uh, proposal, okay, say, you know what, eh, aku ada idea ni lah, aku nak jual uh, uh, package Netflix. Just off the head, of, uh, top of my head, yeah. Now draw package Netflix. Aku nak buat gini gini and gitu gitu. What do you think? So your friend, if they have a bit of business background or pernah ada buat business kecil kecilan sendiri or uh, entrepreneur themselves, they will be able to tell whether the idea jalan ke tak jalan. Okay, and if that person is uh, what you call true blue businessman or uh, entrepreneur, uh, kalau ada sedikit chance, well, banyak sikit lah, like, no, not sedikit chance that you will succeed. If there is a good chance that your business will flourish, they will JV with you. Okay, so work with people who can uh, work together with you. Uh, local partnerships, uh, you may have seen many NGOs uh, do this. They, like, for example, ReefCheck. ReefCheck is very good at approaching uh, uh, corporate companies, you know, like Body Shop and who else. Uh, save, save the sea, you know, save plastic bag. You know, for every plastic bag that you refuse, uh, the Body Shop will donate 20 cents to ReefCheck, for example. You too. So you approach uh, this, this uh, uh, partnership. Develop something that is win-win. And what most corporate companies want is they don't want your money because they're giving out money, right? They want to appear in the papers. 
they want to be uh, mentioned in your uh, radio interview or your social media or uh, some tweet that suddenly went viral. They want to be mentioned that way in a positive light. So offer them that. Okay? But, uh, yeah, but pula. Sorry, but if your business bukan besar besar pun, uh, you may want to approach uh, maybe a local coffee joint near your office or near your home. Uh, you know, for every bag of roasted beans that they sell, then they make a donation to you, something like that, <laughs> for your cause. And then you can put up a, a, a signage on their counter. I mean, outside of coffee lah, okay. Uh, I can put a signage on the counter uh, every bag of uh, coffee bean that you purchase, one ringgit goes to uh, save the harimau, things like that. People want to do good about it. Okay? About the good work that they do. They want to feel good about the good work that they do. Uh, sale of merchandise. So we, we now come back to the beginning. I promise you that I will talk about why I sometimes also refer to TCS as a business. I used to run TCS as a charity for the longest time. Those of you who have known me for like 20 years, I, because I thought we were a charity organization. We are. Uh, we are a non-profit organization, non-governmental organization. But uh, nothing is sustainable if we operate like a charity. Semuanya nak kasih free saja. Macam mana nak sustain our operations? Siapa nak kasih saya free rental office? <laughs> Right, Unify is not going to give me free uh, services for a month, you know. You pakai tak pakai pun, you kena bayar, right? Because that is the business model. So in the past two, three, three or four years, I've started looking at uh, fundraising as a business uh, that we need to uh, embark on. And uh, instead of being a professional beggar, kejap-kejap nampak muka Dr. Pell je minta derma. I lose friends that way, you know, kan? So then I, I want to move away from being a professional beggar to uh, somebody who provides values, kan? So now, when you give me 50 ringgit donation, there are two ways to look at it. It's the same thing, <laughs> but there are two ways to look at it. One, you give me a 50, you give TCS, you make the donation to TCS for 50 ringgit and I will write you a tax deductible receipt. That's all you're going to get from me <laughs> and then thank you email. Or if you go to our online shop, uh, you, you buy something, 50 ringgit, but you also receive something in return, uh, a tote bag or a drawstring bag. So you feel good, lah, kan? You, you, you bought uh, the derma because you buy a bag, kan? you get the bag in return and you also know who made the bag. Kan? Macik-macik di kampung yang buat, kan? bukan ayam yang buat. <laughs> so your money also went to the local macik in the kampung. So 50 ringgit is stretches. So many parties benefit from it. Uh, the macik yang buatkan uh, block batik tu, printing the batik, hand block tu. The macik yang jahitkan, jadikan dia bag ataupun batu seremban ataupun uh, face mask, uh, fabric mask. Kan? The macik tu. DCS, of course, makes a profit. I'm very honest here. And nobody wants to do a business uh, that don't make a profit. <laughs> and, uh, and you, you get something in return. The drawstring bag or the tote bag. Kan? So it's 50 ringgit, tapi everybody happy. Four parties lah. Not everybody lah. So then I started looking into merchandising and uh, uh, using the business model to sustain certain parts of our operations. Things like paying rental, things like utility bills. Benda-benda uh, macam ni, sometimes grant uh, donors, funders, sometimes they tell you that they do not support overheads. Overheads meaning rental, uh, maintenance of the van, ataupun the salary, ataupun if you hire a research assistant, temporary, uh, 2,000 ringgit per month. Some, some grants, they don't want to cover those things. They want to make direct impact. Okay, so where do you go find this money then? So then you make this money by selling. If you have merchandise, merchandise. If you have no merchandise, no problem. Sell your services. Ada je orang tolong baiki uh, grammar thesis. You know, one page, don't know how many ringgit. It's services. It's their time. Can? Or you sell the pictures that you, uh, you took. I have friends who make money. I do not know how much. But I have friends who make money by selling pictures uh, to places, platforms like Getty Images, uh, Shutterstock. Can? 
they uh, stock stock images. So sell your uh, experience, uh, expertise, services, and uh, approach corporate companies uh, because they always place a bulk order. Okay, better than the walk-in ones lah. Yang satu satu order tu because kalau satu company tu order dua ratus uh, pieces terus, the macam macam happy lah kan? Dia boleh jahit banyak kan? Uh, social media challenge, I know it's a two-way sword, um, but I always choose to look at it from a positive point of view. If you remember the ice bucket challenge that raised a lot of money for LAS research, uh, well, I'm not saying you should repeat that. <laughs> I'm saying you should maybe think of a new fun challenge, uh, some hashtags to go around with it. Uh, Fuse Ecotia recently did a burpees challenge. I think they were doing, I don't know how many, a hundred, a thousand burpees in a day or something like that. So if you support them, then uh, make a donation. Uh, some people say, uh, the other challenge is the uh, gold ball. Yeah, some, some people donate their hair to uh, 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 cancer survivors, things like that. You want to motivate your friends because they do this for money, for cancer research. So our marathons, we have got our supporters running a marathon and donating the funds to us. So think of a social media challenge that you can rally your friends to play with you and raise money. Okay, uh, raise funds for, uh, uh, for an organization, for a project, for example, something that doesn't require a lot of money, like building an app. I don't know how much it's going to cost. I'm just going to say 20,000 ringgit. Uh, raise this from your friends. Uh, like last year, Edmund said, last year or this year, Edmund says during my birthday, don't send me uh, 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 presents, uh, but make a donation to a local NGO. That's very nice. Okay, so that people who keep wishing Edmund happy birthday on Facebook, Edmund keep repeating this, then their friends go uh, make a donation to other organizations. Okay, if you are raising funds for to build an app, you can say, you know what guys, I want to build this app that changes the world. Okay, maybe not that way. <laughs> I want to build this app that is highly educational, you know, uh, it will help uh, parents or kids, uh, you will do this, you will do that, but I will need uh, a startup uh, capital of 20,000 ringgit. So tomorrow is my birthday. So if you want to support me, please make a donation like that. So that's one creative way to raise funds. Uh, or organize events, uh, not now, lah, okay? but uh, you can sell tickets, you can uh, entry entrance fees, ataupun uh, uh, coupon booklet. <laughs> I forgot how many coupon booklets I have purchased, you know, so that I can go shopping in my daughter's school. <laughs> charity sale, kan? they have it every year, end of the year. Uh, those, those charity sale makes money. Yeah, because a lot of people, uh, they usually put out their services or if I bake uh, muffins, it's, I sponsor it. I'm not taking money back, okay? I sponsor 200 muffins. Uh, whatever you sell, uh, you, you keep it lah for the funds for your office or for your uh, school. So, golf for charity, sing for charity, charity concert, okay? Organize even virtual events pun jadi. Uh, this one is a uh, craft fair, uh, something that is handmade, okay, you jahit barang tu sendiri, uh, it can be a big sale like muffins or cookies or layer cake, I will buy your layer cakes, uh, handmade items uh, or a raffle ticket, raffle ticket is like a uh, lucky draw, so you you, you pay a, a ticket, okay, 10 ringgit, there's a, a number here, okay, uh, then you pay 10 ringgit and you stand a chance, uh, Macam, macam, macam sports toto. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure if this is legal, uh, halal ke tak, but uh, uh, I learned this from the US. Uh. Raffle tickets, uh, you can buy uh, tickets, 10 ringgit, tapi lepas itu, uh, you, you get a chance to win a prize and then get people to sponsor the prize. So, some more ways to raise funds. Uh, or you have a website. Uh, if you don't want to have a website, uh, build a website from scratch, there are a lot of free resources that allows you to do so, okay? This goes back to the first point just now, um, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, you can easily uh, uh, put together a website uh, to raise funds, 
Okay, uh, if you get your own website like Reefsteaks, Reefsteaks has their own website. Uh, a lot of other things you need to take care of, like uh, domain renewal, uh, web hosting, uh, the design of the page, the usability of it. Uh, is it uh, responsive? If you if you read it from your phone, does it you know uh, show nicely? All these things come into uh, your 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 website. And uh, join competition. Uh, these are not very common. Uh, I've participated in one, but usually they are called um, grant applications. But then, lepas tu, it is like a popularity contest. You submit your proposal, and then they shortlist 10 projects. And then they say, whichever project gets the highest votes will get the money. The popularity contest, lah, kan? <laughs> Miss congeniality. <laughs> and then you go and you blast your friends, can every day you remind them to vote for you. Yeah, so that is one way to get money by asking your friends to vote for you. Okay, so I think that is all. Yeah. So in addition to the a little bit more than a million ringgit that I have raised for total conservation through grants, um we have also raised about a million ringgit from public outreach programs. Public outreach programs includes donation from public, sale of merchandise, um, symbolic therapy and adoption, virtual tours that we have been conducting, uh, trips that we have, con we have been conducting pre-COVID, uh, anything that is not grant, lah. okay, about a million ringgit. Done. <laughs> So uh, you, you can find me here, uh, you can find us here in our social media sites, you can screenshot this or uh, I'm happy to share the slides with you if you want to after this uh, in a PDF file. Okay.